everyone. Um, first, I just want to say thank you so much for coming. Um, this show has been um, a long time coming. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and also some stress uh, because it's one of my first experiences curating anything. Um, Jessica over the summer reached out to me um, and said basically, do you want to help me curate? And I was like, oh my God, absolutely. Like this is the best thing ever. Um, and I knew I wanted to um, make a show uh, about tiny art. Um, I've always been a huge fan of smallness. I'm a, a very small person. Uh, I started making small art in high school. I went to like a, an arts high school um, in large part because it was so much easier to carry on the train. Um, it was so much easier to keep it from getting messed up. Um, and I just started uh, developing more and more of an appreciation for um, what the tiny can do. It makes you um, step up close. It makes you really pay attention. Um, and I think that it's just really powerful in a very um, interesting way. It's easy for things to be really funny. Um, it's easy for things to be really quiet and sensitive and serious. It's just so wonderful. Um, and I, as uh, I'm sure many people in this room have done, um, got into making tiny books at some point. <laughs> um, that is for some reason an impulse many people seem to have. Um, so this is all just to background that, um, like why I wanted to do this show. Um, and the work that was submitted was amazing. It blew my mind. Um, we have like really funny things. We have really beautiful things. We have um, art by uh, people who maybe wouldn't feel confident saying I am an artist and I think that's one of the beautiful things about small art is it's um, more accessible in that way um so yeah thank you guys so much for coming um for the artists in the room thank you so much for submitting um I'm really excited for this and yeah I hope you enjoy the show And now Sam Claypool, who submitted one of the poems in the gallery guide, will come to talk a little bit about her art. Well, I did actually come to talk a little bit about my art, but about small art in general. <laughs> um, I almost decided to just uh, talk about um, William Carlos Williams' poem, This Is Just to Say, but I think if I tried to give a lecture on that, it would not be a small talk. It would be a very long talk, despite the fact that the poem only has like 30 words in it. Um, because once I start, I often cannot just stop. Uh, but instead, I decide to ask, uh, what does it actually mean to stop and smell the flowers? To stop and smell the flowers is to take stock of the present world and appreciate each detail of it for the masterpieces that they are to notice the scent of the rose as distinct from, the, um, from that of the hydrangea. There's a pure sense of contentment in appreciating the world for its particulars. Uh, the, the prickling sharp edge uh, from a broken corner on my favorite necklace, the bent trunk of the solitary tree in the front of the CVS by a frogro, uh, the gaping mouth of the electrical sockets by my work computer, the prospective student nervously hanging onto her mother's elbow at the fourth tour of the day to stop at the Brent Franklin statue, how my roommate's foot, which always seems to, uh, how my roommate's foot always seems to stick out from whatever blankets she's sleeping under, whether she's passed out on the couch or in her bed for once. I'm tempted to just keep listing things because each detail, uh, really, uh, each detail really is an object of fascination in and of itself, worthy of individual attention. But I do have a point. I promise. <laughs> Um, I think that small art makes us notice small detail. Every expert stroke of the brush becomes more obvious for the smallness of size, for the fine craftsmanship we can't help but notice in the minuscule. When a tiny poem, what like uh, a tiny poem, 
What, <laughs> what else is like a tiny poem? To bring it out the sculpted curve of a single comma or its absence. Small art teaches us to appreciate small detail, to find that contentment of having stopped to smell the roses long enough um, to find the masterful shape of something real. Thank you. Up next, we have Quinn Gruber, who I think is reading some very tiny poems. Hi, these aren't um, my poems, but these are just two really short poems that I found like just really important, I suppose, in how they capture the, the smallness of life. Because even though time passes really quickly, the days are also really long and infinite in the way that they kind of stretch on. But this is One Day by Robert Creeley. One day after another. Perfect. They all fit. And then the second one. <laughs> and then Skint Valentine by Tom Pickard. What we have is what there is and who we are and who we is is love. Thanks. <laughs> Um, and up next, we have Miranda Ribeiro Vecino. Okay. Hello. Okay. So, when I first saw the email um, that Allison was putting on this show, I was really intrigued by the premise of like having a small works exhibition because I'm often very preoccupied by the small moments in life that really, to me, our big moments in life. So I thought I would um, submit this card piece that I made about a year ago. It's called Take a Moment. And it's a small business card piece that was inspired by Adrienne Piper. Um, she's a conceptual artist. And she has this uh, project called um, Calling Cards. So in this project, she prints like hundreds of cards for the purpose of handing them out to people who were committing like small microaggressions against her, where like when these microaggressions actually like were very harmful to her, um, this small gesture was a way for her to take away the emotional like baggage of having to like deal with that all the time and the emotional labor having to deal with that all the time. And I appropriated this format and I applied it to concerns that I have about like big things like mental health and the false ideal that I think is the, the idea that we have that we can maybe separate mental health from the capitalist practices that like make it happen in the first place. Um, so these are like really big concepts. So I, so to me, this is a lot to tackle. So I thought that this like small format would be a way to give voice to that. Um, so yeah, uh, so like even as we like rationalize self-care practices as capitalistically unproductive, um, I find that our language usage around self-care um, usually shares in capitalist terminology. And I think that this suggests, this itself, like the language usage, suggests the impossibility of escape from the capitalist structure. And I focused on the re relaxation aphorism, take a moment, because I think that this relies on the partition of time that a, is like a usefully defined unit of time that can quickly serve the capitalist need to monetize time and control workers. Um, so in this project, I have like basically like tried to step into the capitalist shoes and objectify the moment itself in a like funny gesture, but also I think s like pretty serious gesture. And um, my hope is that people will be able to like reflect on the idiosyncrasy of language and perhaps note how it may not be like as accidental or banal as we think it may be. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think those are all the artists that uh, said beforehand that they wanted to speak, but I invite any artists in the uh, crowd who are in the show, um, if you want to speak about small art, please come up and do so um, about your practice, about just why you like small art, or if you don't, that would be very interesting. 
Um, and if not, does anyone want to take it? Does anyone want to come up? All right. Then uh, I'm pretty sure we have food out, and uh, we can have some tiny food in not tiny portions and enjoy the art. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone.